yet another LED lamp, but this time it is from IKEA. It's the Solheta LEDs. Technically speaking, I should have checked the pronunciation of that before I started the video, but Solheta it is. It's probably close enough. Uh, this one is non-dimmable. It's 2,700K colour temperature, which is a warm white, and it says 25,000 hours. I'm inclined to believe that's probably true with IKEA. It's worth mentioning that its efficiency is D, but note this is the new European efficiency thing. Well, actually, it's the British symbol there, I guess, that's not the European thing. It's the British efficiency thing. In the past, these LED lamps would have been A++++++. They went right back down to F. This one's actually at D, and I get the feeling that that may indicate, and I could be wrong here, that it may have lots and lots of LEDs not being driven too hard, unlike many of the other products. Because there's text everywhere in there. Wow. So much text. Let's put it into the lamp tester and give it a test. It looks Actually, it's not that warm. It's quite a, a fierce. It also says 6 watts. What's that? Oh, where's the other one? What's going on there? Is this the correct lamp? Oh, it says 4,000K in this box. Someone's been shuffling lamps. Or is it just mislabeled? Um, 470 lumen. This looks as though it might be the right lamp. Oh, that's better. It's not that bright. Okay. The other one. Well, that's exciting. Uh, 3.4 watts, as indicated. Uh, and it is that warm white. What happened there? Someone has clearly been emptying boxes out and stuffed a, a wrong lamp in. I don't even know they did these ones. We'll open both of them. That's the answer. We shall open both of the lamps. Rightio, let's start with uh, this one, whichever it is. We'll work it out when we see the inside. So I'm going to squeeze the plastic in and use unreasonable force to try and part this from the base. As one does, that is well glued on. Right, that looks like the warmish coloured one. Oh, blimey, it's got a separate power supply in the back. It's not what I was expecting. Uh, also, slight trace of blood appearing. Not to worry. Now we'll get the spudder into this one, since the other one was quite hard to get open, and it sometimes helps to just slide this around inside. That, uh, that was better. This one is based on a linear current regulator, and this is this a higher power one, and a higher number of LEDs. As it is for a typical 4 wattish type lamp, 3.4 watt, uh, this one has quite a lot of LEDs. Right, okay, I shall uh, open these, and we shall explore them further. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. And I have to say that IKEA seem to have bucked the trend of linear regulators by using buck regulators in both these lamps, but different buck regulators, one which I have not seen before. Quite interesting. Let's zoom down just a little bit to get closer to these pictures. The LED panel of the low power warm white lamp, this sort of 3.4 watt was it? It has 10 LEDs. The LEDs are wired as parallel pairs all wired in series, so there's effectively five parallel pairs in series. And each one of these has six chips per LED, so roughly 18 volts per parallel pair. The circuitry is completely off-board here, and it's worth mentioning that housing for this has a couple of oddities. It is not the, the well, it's not the aluminium housing like the other one is. It's a thermally conductive plastic housing, but also... You know, there's a little stud that goes up the bottom for the connection for the uh, E27 holders. Look at the length of this one. It goes right up the inside and then goes into the wire pinching point, which is right up at the end. That is quite strange. I don't know why they've done that. That is unusual. Maybe it's to make it universally suitable for different lamp holders. I'm not sure. But they have done it. That is what they've done. Uh, I'll put that out of the way. We can look at the circuit board, and there is a BP, I'm going to have to read it off the data sheet here, BP2861, BP2861. That is a very simple buck regulator. We've got a bridge rectifier converting the incoming AC to DC. Uh, there, I've not flipped these over, by the way. There are 
There's the inline resistor, which I think is 30 ohms. We've got a small induction series with the rectifier. Actually, that's after the rectifier with its resistor across it. And then we've got a smoothing capacitor, the 400 volt one, uh, quite a low value. I think that was one microfarad, and so is this one as well, the one that's actually for the LEDs. And there is the inductor that limits the current through the LEDs. The circuitry itself, uh, not really much to it. Uh, there is the incoming supply via the 30 ohm resistor. There is a position for a capacitor that is not used, a little suppression capacitor types of X2. Um, we've got a 9.1K resistor in parallel with a little filtering inductor. We've got the two smoothing capacitors, one for the incoming supply and one for the output to the LEDs. And there is, which I've not drawn the drawing, a resistor to provide a slight load across the LEDs. Uh, possibly to avoid ghosting, to make sure it goes out quickly, and uh, also, well, that's mainly the two reasons, probably. There are two current sense resistors, a 10 ohm and 11 ohm, pretty much 5 ohm then. Um, but everything else is done by this chip. This strangely deliberate blob of stuff, I wasn't sure what it was until I saw the little blob oozing out the other side. I think that's just for priming the glue nozzle. Not sure if it's for any specific reason, but they use glue under these components when they pick and place them. Let me bring in the data sheet, because the data sheet is all we need. I shall zoom out a bit. The data sheet, I've added the 30 ohm resistor where they've shown a fuse, so it's because it is a fusible resistor. There's the little capacitor that's not used. There, that's uh, blanked out because it was a straight line through. They've added the 9.1K resistor and the inductor. And the only other thing I really need to add to this is a resistor, which I think is, yes, it is, across here. And that is 510K. So almost certainly just to avoid ghosting of the LEDs. There's the uh, parallel series array of LEDs. I'm guess, guessing, guesstimating, 90 volts across the LEDs. Uh, unusually used the same value capacitor for both. It's quite a low value, but it works. It's fine. And there's the two sense resistors at the bottom. Uh, not really much else to say. It's a standard buck regulator. There'll be a diode inside here, um, which uh, that uses the inductor to limit the current uh, when it turns on, when it basically shunts it to the zero volt rail. Uh, briefly, and then when it turns it back off again, that field collapses, it will divert that back through a diode in the package round to uh, get double duty out of that for efficiency to charge capacitor and light the LEDs. All the current sensing is done via these resistors. You could change these, you could snap one of them off, and that would effectively, um, probably, half the power, if you wanted to do it. But to be honest, I'm expecting the IKEA stuff to be Pretty efficient. Now, the next one here, the other lamp, let's zoom down this a bit. Quite an odd construction. The circuitry is all in the one circuit board, but they've actually glued it on with uh, silicone and then folded these little panty flaps over on the, the panty wings to hold that in place. But it is, it's not sticky, gooey silicone. It is hard silicone, and that means that it's quite Difficult getting that circuit board off, so I didn't bother. Uh, they have spaced all the capacitors off with big long leads to try and keep the heat away from them. Uh, there is a little filter inductor there. There's a little uh, filter capacitor there. There's the inductor limits current through the LEDs. I will find the data sheet for this, which is an odd chip. Let me zoom out to fit this in. No, let me zoom out further. To fit this in. So what we have here this time, there is a 10 ohm resistor in line. They've added a 68 nanofarad capacitor and a little filtering inductor in the series here. I don't see a resistor across that. There's usually a little shunt resistor to uh, as a damping resistor across the inductors. The bridge rectifier is in here. Effectively what they've got here is what I often draw as the bridge rectifier. So they've got the AC going in here and they've got the negative and the positive going out like that. Note, see these earth symbols here? They're not earth. They just mean the negative. They're just a reference for the... The circuitry is ground reference. It's zero volt reference. It's not actually mains ground. 
And then after that, it is just the same thing again. Uh, they've got that little diode in there. They've got the um, current sense resistor there. Current sense resistor. Now there's a thing. Where's the current sense resistor? Oh, there it is. Uh, one moment, please. And resume. It's 8.2 ohm in parallel with 12 ohm. Uh, they are on the front, so that's not too hard a hack. Theoretically, you could whap one of those resistors out and change the power rating of the lamp. Uh, more critical with this one because it is going to get a lot hotter. The LEDs are three chip LEDs and there's 18 of them in series giving I estimate 162 volts. There is a 50k shunt resistor across that, which that seems quite odd. I thought it would have been higher than that. I thought it would have been 500k, but it definitely says 503. 50 and three zeros, 50k. Mm, strange. And once again, uh, it will have a little um, diode in here to make sure that when it uses this inductor to actually bridge to the zero volt rail, is it going to be bridging to the zero volt, zero volt rail? Yes, it is. Uh, that when the field collapses and it will divert it back to the capacitor again for that maximum efficiency. Uh, in this case, they've got 2.2 microfarad 400 volt death beam capacitors for both, but they're completely different capacitors. It's a little brown one, maybe a low impedance one uh, on the output side and a high impedance one in the input side, but they're really small for the value, uh, suspiciously small for the value. They've miniaturized stuff a lot, but at least they have spaced them off in these wires to try and avoid them being overheated. But there we go. That is the IKEA lamps. The double whammy video, because I don't know why there were two different lamps in the one package. I wonder if people had just been pulling them out of the packet and just laying them out and someone had just stuffed them back in. Or maybe someone wanted one of each. So they opened the packets and they made a packet of their own with one of each value of the lamp. Um... And then uh, the other ones, they put the other one back in and that's the one that I randomly picked up. It was a random choice of lamp box. Well, that's worth remembering. No, don't do that. Uh, but there we go. The IKEA lamps, very different to the way other lamps have gone, particularly for the non-dimmables. Um, I didn't get dimmable lamps, I don't think. I'll have to dig through what I bought. Uh, I ended up going to IKEA, but I ended up just holding everything. I, I should have got a bag, really. Uh, I didn't want to get too much because I was going to have to ship it back. And I, I used that to regulate how much I bought. But I ended up with handfuls of stuff all stacked on top of each other with only one minor avalanche during the shopping experience. But there we go. The IKEA LED lamps, quite interesting. And being IKEA, I would expect them to be pretty good quality and last a decent length of time.